Hello everyone, I'm Li Ye from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. This work is to unify offline causal inference and online banded algorithms for data-driven decision. This presentation has four parts. First, I will introduce the decision problems. Then, I will present our algorithm framework with an example. After that, we will see the experimental results and the theoretical results. In WeChat, there are many notifications. For example, when your friends have some new posts, you may receive a notification. Push notifications can increase users' usage frequency. However, pushing too many notifications will annoy the users. If the users are angry enough, they may close the functions or even uninstall the app. WeChat can change the frequency of notifications. For example, now the top stories functions only pushes notifications in the evening. Previously, they push a notification every time your friends recommend some article. Then, one of the decision problem is how frequently should WeChat push notifications. We want to introduce one more decision problem. That is how to place the advertisement in the feeds. We know advertisements produce a major income of internet companies like Google or Facebook. In a feed system like Instagram, there are two categories of contents, videos and images. In the feeds, a user will first see the content above the ad and then see the ad. The content above the ad could affect users' behavior on the advertisement. Regarding to the contents above the ad, there are two decisions. The first decision is to place an ad below videos, and the second decision is to place an ad below images. For the company like Facebook, a decision problem is how to place the ad. In the following presentations, we will show how to solve the decision problems using our framework. Let us go back to this decision problem on how to place an advertisement. The company usually collects a lot of log data. Each line records the visits of a user. For example, the first user does not see a video above the ad. From the company's user profiling, the company knows this user does not like video. The company also knows this user is 30 years old and he did not click the ad. The data-driven decision problem is how to maximize the total number of clicks for the next 10,000 users with the log data. In this example, the click rate is affected by the ad placement and the user's preference to videos. From the table, we see that for both types of users who like video or not, placing an ad below images will always result in a higher click rate. This is possibly because video attracts users' attention so that users pay less attention on the advertisement if the ad is placed below videos. So we know placing an ad below images is always the better decision. We also list the number of users in the log data in each subgroup. Now, we present our algorithm framework with the example. Let us see some possible methods for this decision problem. A naive method would be to calculate the average click rate for the two decisions. After calculation, we find that the average click rate is higher if we place ads below videos. So we decide to place ads below videos. Because we know the ground truth, we see that we choose the worst action using this method. Why taking the average result in a wrong decision? This is because in the log data, the users who see ads below videos and the users who see ads below images are different user populations. In fact, 
the user who see as below videos are more likely to be the video lovers. So it is not fair to compare the average between two different populations of users. Another method is the offline causal inference approach. The basic idea is to do fair comparison. We only compare between users with the same characteristics. For example, for the user 1, we find the user 1 prime with the same characteristics but have different decision. The user 1 prime is like the twin brother of user 1 in the log data. Similarly, we find the twin brother of user 2. If we cannot find the twin brother for some data point, we do not use such data point. Then we calculate the average click rate for the two groups of users. As a graphical illustration, among all the data points, we only use the data points in a dotted rectangle after the pairing process in a causal inference method. We see that by this paired comparison, placing the add below images results in a higher click rate for both types of users, which is also known to be the better decision according to the ground truth. In this example, we make the right decision but due to the finite sample of data, it is possible that the number 2% increases to 8%. In this case, we will make the wrong decision, and the wrong decision will apply to all the 10,000 users. We point out that all the offline causal inference algorithms only uses the log data. Companies nowadays usually conduct A-B tests on a small portions of users before applying the decision to all the users. After conducting the experiment on 2,000 users, we apply the winning decision, that is to place the add below images to the remaining users. In the A-B test, we use at least 1,000 users to test the worst decision of placing add below videos. This is a possible drawback of online A-B test. We point out that the online A-B tests do not use log data. Now, we introduce an algorithm instance of our framework that can use both the log data and the online feedbacks. In the offline phase, we apply the causal inference method to get some estimate of the click rate. Then, we know placing the ad below images can result in a higher click rate. Therefore, for the first 100 users, we give more traffic to decision 2, that is to place the ad below images. Similarly, for the next 100 users, even more traffic are distributed to decision 2, as we are more certain that decision 2 is a better decision. Our algorithmic framework consists of two parts. In the online learning part, we directly adopt the existing online learning algorithm like UCB or Thompson sampling or linear UCB. In time slot t, a user with context xt arrives. Then the online learning oracle plays an action at. After that, the online environment gives a feedback yt. In the offline causal inference part, we use the log data to simulate feedbacks in order to train the online banded oracle. First, the context generator generates a context X. This is to simulate the arrival of a random user. Second, the banded oracle chooses an action A. Third, the offline evaluator generates a feedback Y according to the log data. For example, if there exists a log data point x, a, y that has the same context and the same action, then we return the outcome y as a feedback. We see that there are two major components in our framework. The one is the offline evaluator, and the other is the online banded oracle. And our framework unifies them. Now we present some experimental results. To show why we need to use both log and online data, we compare the causal inference algorithm that only uses log offline data 
and the Bandy algorithm that only uses the online feedbacks, and our algorithm that uses both the offline data and the online feedbacks. From the synthetic data, we see that the causal inference algorithm denoted as the only offline algorithm increases its regret as time increase linearly. This is because it does not adjust according to the online feedbacks. Second, the online learning algorithm at first has a sharp increase of the regret because it needs to explore all the decisions. Later, the regret increases slowly as the online algorithm learns the optimal decision. And our offline plus online algorithm gets the best of the both worlds. It has no regret at first and then learn the optimal decision gradually. We also conduct experiments on WeChat data. The decision is on the notification strategy as we mentioned before. The reward is some North Star metric to evaluate the system in the company. Our algorithm can reduce the regret by 45% compared to the offline causal inference algorithm and reduce the regret by 37% compared to the online banded algorithm. The second question you may ask about is why do we need to judiciously use the log data using the causal inference method and not the other method? We can see from this figure using historical average to initialize UCB results in the highest regret because it ignores the impacts of the confounders. Linear regression performs worse than our algorithm because the linear model is often biased for real data like that in WeChat. And the XG boost performs worse than our algorithm because it also cannot guarantee the unbiased estimate of the rewards. This experiment shows that we need causal inference to get the unbiased models from, from the NOG data. In WeChat data, we also compare the non-parametric forest algorithm and the linear model-based algorithms. The algorithms based on the forest achieve twice the reward compared to the algorithm based on the linear model. This is reasonable because in the WeChat data, the reward is probably not a linear function of user's features. Therefore, the linear function is hard to learn reasonable model about user's preferences. We have seen that empirically, the algorithm using our unified framework has the highest rewards or the lowest regrets. We now present some theoretical results. The regret bound for the UCB algorithm is well known to be log t with respect to the time t. However, if we only use the offline causal inference algorithms, the regret will increase linearly as the time t increases. This is because once we make the wrong decision based on the log data, the wrong decision will persist. Our algorithm that can use both log data and online feedbacks can, can reduce the regret by a constant A, where A can be regarded as the number of log data points used in the algorithm. <clears throat> For contextual algorithms, we have similar reduction of regret. We want to emphasize that we derive a regret bound for the epsilon grady online forest algorithm, which is the first regret bound for the forest-based online learning algorithm. For more details, please read our paper. Thank you.